Time for political spotlight, and I'm delighted to say I'm joined by Andrew Britton, MP. Andrew announced that he was joining Lawrence Fox's reclaimed party this week. He lost the Conservative whip in January after claiming that COVID vaccines were the biggest crime against humanity since the Holocaust, and he was elected in 2010 as an MP for North West Leicestershire, but has sat as an independent since the scandal. I'm delighted to say that Andrew joins me now. Andrew, welcome. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, so talk to me then. Let, let's get straight into what actually sort of happened with regard regard to um, why you are sort of, um, you know, lost your place in the Conservative Party. Talk to me about that. What, what happened? Because I know some people hear it, but I well, heard... Well, the, the, the party um, will use um, the old trope of um, anti-Semitism and racism against me. That's, that's the smear they've used. But it was pretty clear they, they moved that to my views on the vaccine. We're, we're now living in... Uh, a so-called democracy where you can't talk about certain things. We can't talk about vaccine harms. Um, we can't talk about vaccine deaths. I've been calling for a debate in Parliament for the last five months on the excess deaths we're seeing every week. Mm. Last week was quite a, you know, 14% over the five-year average. Last week, the week before, 22% above the, uh, the five-year average. That was 2,540 citizens, it affects every community, every constituency of the country, and I'm the but, only but, MP in Parliament that's calling for a debate on the excess deaths. You know, I mean, look, it's I mean, not just happening in our Parliament, but look, okay, it's happening so, across so, the world in all the parliaments. So with regard to, you know, checking on excess deaths, that doesn't mean that it's necessarily caused by the vaccine. It could be something else that's causing excess well, deaths, if that is the case. Well, it may be, but, but I mean, well, there's a great paper out from the University of Western Norway, uh, Institute of Applied Science, that they analysed the numbers and uh, they looked at the vaccination rates across countries and they found that for every one percent of your population vaccinated in 2020 in 2021 you've got point one of a percent increase in mortality they found a very strong correlation now but, correlation but, is not but, but, exactly not, i was going to say correlation but, but is correlation, not causation and cor also and also those stats we're not able to verify i mean a lot of the time you get people making talking about all these different yeah, stats yeah, that suit the, their the pa narrative. The papers are out there but you know Correlation is not causality, but correlation is an alarm bell, a mm. fire alarm. Now, what we've got is a situation where there's fire alarm bells going off all over the building, but no one wants to open the door and have a look. And that's what we're seeing across the world uh, at the moment. I, I, you know, look, as you said, correlation is, doesn't necessarily mean that the causality doesn't mean there's a correlation to it. Uh, and also... Well, there's uh, certainly a correlation. With the, statistics saying... that you, the statistics you're talking about, there are studies that actually prove that there are no harm caused. So there are different studies that would say different things. So my view is that, yes, if you take one study, it could say something else, but there are others. Well, if you look at the, the, the double-blind uh, studies from Pfizer that they tried to hide for 75 years, which were released under the Supreme Court order, you look at their raw data and, and well, the, the, their submissions, 50,000 pages, um, it's, it's, it's one in 990 serious adverse events. Well, again, and, and to bring you on those adverse events, actually, again, um, a lot of those adverse events, the yellow card reporting system, a lot of those were just simple things like bruising and stuff like that. A lot of those, yes, yes, but, a but, lot of those but, things... But, but that's the same yellow card system we've had for all the vaccines, all the conventional vaccines, which are normally a dead piece of virus, an inert piece of virus, which you, you'll get an antigen re, uh, response. These are experimental mRNA. They're a gene therapy. They make your, well, own, no, no, they make your, own, they make your own body produce the, the protein. Protein, you the say they're experimental, but they're not, are they? they went well, they through, never went through they, th 23 no, trials. They, they did go through straight to stage three trials, actually. They did go through stage three but trials. Where are the results? Where are the in, results then? Where in the fact, results? I've seen, the, if you go to Fiverr's website, you'll actually see that they did go through stage three trials. So they have but not before the, they were rolled out. No, no, no. They have gone through stage three trials. Okay, well, in that case. So that's what I'm saying. So you're saying why, they didn't. Why, I'm telling you why do they need to, So they're perfectly safe and effective. We're told they're safe and effective. Why do they need to have uh, immunity from prosecution for the harms then? Well, I mean, that's. Well, listen, listen. The, uh, India is the biggest market for drugs now in the world. It's got to have the next month. It'll have the biggest population in the world, 1.3 or thereabouts billion, bigger than China. The, the, the Indian government will not give Pfizer. Uh, indemnity from prosecution for the harm. Yeah, but that, but they won't that, sell one drug there. But, 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 that but, but, billions, but to be honest, yeah, but, put billions of doses but, around the world. But that doesn't and, mean they're still not standing behind their. That, that doesn't mean anything. That doesn't, doesn't mean that they're not standing behind their product. They are, and a lot well, of people. Not, a lot of people. Uh, if we look at the vaccines, though, a lot of people have potentially been saved by those vaccines, and we need to look at that um, as well. It is important. Yeah. Well, average age of death from COVID nineteen was was over normal longevity in this. Yeah, but country. you tell that. But but but. It, Listen, let's be honest. I mean, let's be honest. The, the, government, the, government, let's move the on. government have just rolled, just made a decision that at the end of this month, 
despite my pleas in the in the in the House of Commons, they're going to uh, they're approving the use of the Moderna vaccine for babies down to six months. Okay, but listen, there's no, there's no, no, no child listen. of that age healthy that okay, ever died of COVID nineteen. With, 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 in my view, Moderna's one in, in six hundred and sixty-two. In my view, uh, I, I don't think. In my view, if you look, uh, in my view, in terms of vaccinating of children, I don't think that's necessary. That's just my view. But if if the government want to do that and people want to have their children vaccinated, then, then that's fair enough. I don't think there's a problem but with that. But they should have informed no, consent. Yeah, they need but, to know but about listen, the risks. We all, we, listen, we all have looked at the risks of the vaccines. I looked at the risks of the vaccine myself. I knew with absolutely any medical treatment there could be a side effect. Everything has some sort of side effect. And I was fortunate that there wasn't any real serious side effect. But that, that is the risk that every single, single treatment that you will ever have, or even something that you eat, can have a side effect. So we, we know that. What I'd love to do is just have a word about the, the previous topic, about your, your mitochondria. I now, remember, yes, I now we were talking about that debate that. about because eight you, years ago, yeah. and I supported it as, as like some, my degrees in biological sciences and biochemistry. Mm. What your viewers need to know is that um, the reason there's separate genetic material in the mitochondria, they're mm. the part of the cell that burn sugar and make energy. So this for is us. for the three um, during our evolution cells, yeah. become humans. Yeah. They were actually it's a bacteria that's gone into our cell and become symbiotic with us. That burns the sugar. That's why it's got that mm -hmm. specific uh, separate DNA to, to our nucleus. And it's also it's, it, because it, it's passed through the maternal line. Mm -hmm. There aren't that many maternal lines where we're, we're actually very closely related. Every one of us outside Africa are very closely related. It would be quite possible to, to get a good copy of that mitochondria from uh, an, another lady uh, who was very, very closely related. It would be the same. And that's the reason why that genetic material is in there is mm. because originally that was a bacteria that uh, inserted itself, was absorbed into ourselves, and is now living in symbiosis. So, this so it's, is, so it's not actually altering the, the genetic... So this is with it the... It will never, make, never change and make anyone look any different or be any different. It's only the part of the cell in our bodies that burns our sugars for us and creates energy. That's interesting. So with regard to the base... I voted for that about yeah. eight years ago. So this is to change to, to actually have a... So this isn't really three parents at all. It's not three parents. It's not three parents it at not? all. No, so it's not. So the way it's kind of pitched is that no, and you, and you could even you could even get a related female and take those mitochondria, mm. and they would be they would be a good copy of identical to the ones that would have been in. Do, that do you think that's a good practice? Though, the fact that we're doing um, that in terms uh, of we, we debated this about eight years mm. ago. It's interesting. It's now finally come mm. to fruition, and I think that you know I I supported that, and I think that makes progress because it's not altering the genetic of the of the of the of the nucleus. It's only in the mitochondria, and that was always going to be separate DNA. Oh, that's interesting, isn't it? But it's fascinating. I think it's a good thing that, that they should be... Uh, well, to be honest, until I spoke out in the chamber in favour of that, yeah. I think we were losing the bait, debate. I could see it was drifting away and people were thinking, mm, and this all is three parents' business. It's, uh, it's, it's not quite that. Mm, so, Andrew, you've joined Reclaim. You're yes. now with Reclaim Party. Uh, yes. why, why not reform? Because they're slightly bigger. Because, They've got well, more I think, I think going on. To be generous, and uh, no, well, not being too critical of, uh, of, of reform, I think they've been inconsistent on some of their policies. And um, as I was saying, you, know, you speak your truth, see who hangs around and you find your tribe. Well, I found my tribe. Mm. Um, and obviously, Lawrence Fox and Reclaim are completely for free speech. I think that's fundamental in politics and for freedom of the individual. Um, Lawrence has been cancelled. Apart from GB News, I've been cancelled nah. effectively from the media. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, listen, Andrew, it's so good to talk to you. We're running out of time as well. Of course, Andrew's not a vaccine expert, but he has got his views and I respect them. And this is, of course, a free country. Thank you so much for your thoughts. That's Andrew Britton. He was my political spotlight.